Gaslands, post-apocalyptic vehicular combat by Mike Hutchinson, part of the Blue Book series of Osprey War Games. It wouldn't be the House of War Gaming if we didn't have a scenario in mind that's a little bit off the wall. The city of Midville is under attack. Well, kind of. What we have here is a classic gauntlet scenario. I've got two cars, one here, just a car handling three, max gear of five. This black and yellow one has a machine gun and a smoke dropper. Up here is a green car that has a machine gun and a glue dropper. They both have a crew of two, so they'll be firing their handguns. And they're going to have to do that because they're just trying to get from point A to point B. All they want to do is cross the table. If you need a narrative, they've crossed the wastelands and they've cheated the city of Midville out of their import-export tax. And now Mondo, the good citizens of Midville are going to try and stop them. Here's one base and two base. And you'll notice that we've got two different kinds of bases here. The guys in bright yellow are packing nothing but Molotov cocktails. The guys in black are, are packing handguns. That's it. That's where they start. You can see we've got guys in yellow here, 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 and here. All the rest of the pedestrians you see are in black. The way we're going to handle these, now I understand... The Fancy Pants, for those of you that shelled out for the deluxe second edition hardcover book, you might have pedestrian rules of your own. I don't. I'm winging it. So what we're going to do is we're going to have each pedestrian unit gets to move one base width every single time, every single gear shift phase. So they can move a total of six inches per turn, and they're also very nimble. However, a couple of things. The, and they're, uh, like I said, they are packing either handguns or Molotov cocktails, and I think that's it, man. I think we're just about ready to go. On turn one, they're going to have to come out of these buildings out the door. The alarm has been sounded. These guys are ripping through. They had to slow down to first gear to avoid whatever hazard was out there. So they're going to start in first gear on the first turn. And, in fact, they're going to take the first move action. So, without any further ado, let's zoom in on these guys. Now, Sorry. I have to warn you, I don't have a whole lot of experience with this game, so it might be a little dangerous to play with it like this. We're going to take it a little easy. Uh, this may be over lickety split. It may be wildly unbalanced in favor of one team or the other. And since it's the first turn and we're going to play it safe, they're simply going, both of these cars are just going to try to get up as fast as possible and leave those pedestrians in the dirt. So on the first gear shift, they're both just gonna use the medium template and then they're done. Then our pedestrians can come out to play and we're gonna bring them out like this and that's all the movement that they're gonna get. Here you can see these guys have come out. These guys are coming out the front door facing none of that matters with these guys because they are so nimble. And the boys on this side have a little surprise for our cars. They have a couple of single shot. You didn't think they were going to bring just a pistol fight to a car duel, did you? They've got some single shot caltrops. These guys are going to go ahead and come over to this door. They need to wait and see which way he's going. So they want to be ready to come out either way, throw those caltrops down. It might be their last chance to do a couple of hold points to these guys. Uh, with that done, they have a range of mediums, so these guys are going to fire 1d6 here, and these guys are not quite in range. Uh, these guys that came out are also not quite in range. They're going to be hard-pressed to catch up in time. When we do this scenario again, we might want to have a lot more pedestrians on the table, but we'll, we've got what we've got, so we'll make do, and that means rolling uh, d6 for this fire over here. And that's going to be a miss. And then I think that was the only shot for the first phase. So we move on to the second phase. And our boys are going to go ahead and take that, that free shift up to, oh, we'll line it up just right. So he's going to blast up here medium. And he is also going to blast up the medium distance. Now the question is how suicidal these guys feel. And they're not feeling all that suicidal. So for movement, let's go ahead and bring this guy. As I said, they can move in any direction. So we'll move him there. 
and we'll bring this guy up to here and yeah let's go ahead and have some suicidal pedestrians they'll face that way and um, because hitting pedestrians is going to be an obstacle it's going to be a, a it's going to make for a good way to uh, slow these cars down this side of the table where they're going to move uh, bring them one inch up to there these guys just came out these guys moved up and then there's there's just one more right over here the guys over in st drogo's they're just gonna hang out right there for now and that's it for the pedestrian movement so if we come back to the shooty shooty this time around Right, the question is whether we want to throw some pedestrians in front of this car just to slow them down. And I don't think we do. We've got two units of, of Molotov cocktails there. Oh, these guys, are, that's going to be their movement as well. Oh, you know, come to think of it, these guys did have a shot, didn't they? If we bring him back to where, no, he, yeah, with that machine gun now. He, well, no, that's not true. He didn't have a shot because that was the last turn. So when he moved up to here, this template is going to go right there. And I guess let's go ahead and give him a shot at, at this guy. And the way we're going to do this, because it's not a car, it's a smaller guy, he's going to take his 2d6, and he's only going to get one hit. So these guys are going to go ahead and save on a... Let's call it that they're automatically behind an obstruction because there's so few. So, And they only have one hull point. So on a five or a six, they're eliminated. They are not. All right, so that's what shooting is going to look like. This guy over here, he might have a shot if we drop this template down here. Remember, it's a double. So is that a medium and long? He may... No, he doesn't have a shot because the double is going to look something like that. He might have wanted to start turning already. I forgot to put the shift. They are in third gear each. So we have a total of one, two, using that medium template for our range. We've got a total of two D6 attacking that guy. And the Molotov cocktails, I think, have a short range. We'll handle this one first. Two D6 shooting at that car. Three to three is going to be a miss. That's going to be two attacks here. So two dice. We've got two hits. Then he's going to, if he wants to avoid that, he's going to have to evade. Because he is in third gear, he's going to get three chances to evade those hits. So rolling 3d6, he avoids one, but he takes two hits. And because of that, he is now on fire, and fortunately for me, because I'm using my riot template, I'm going to put a little fire token on him. That's going to chase him around until he runs out of all of his hazard tokens. Uh, so that is going to be, it's going to leave him with eight hull points left to go, and we're done with that second. We are now in third gear, and... That means moving. Uh, he's got he's got a problem because he needs to slip through there. I think in third gear we're gonna go ahead and use the veer, which doesn't give him the free move, but it doesn't give him a hazard. So he can slide up along there, and he's still in third gear. He doesn't want to shift because he's gonna have to veer again. Now this guy is on fire. He automatically loses one hull point. He is now down to three, but because he has no hazards, that fire goes out. His internal fire suppression system kicks in, and he's gonna go ahead and stick, he's gonna, we're gonna have this guy just rip on through. We'll put the template down, he's in third gear. He's gonna gear up to fourth gear. And with the free shift on our little template, now I'm using six millimeter figures. This is part of the Mad Ron series from Irregular Miniatures. So he's in fourth gear. That's gonna make things a little bit tricky because he doesn't have a straight shot. The old A-team van is parked here. It's gonna be in trouble. Uh, we've moved both of our guys. None of them have taken a hazard token yet. By the way, the curbs are hazards. So they're gonna start, they're gonna start racking up hazards here pretty soon. 
We've got a base of pedestrians down here that's going to run up. We've got a base here that's going to try to chase. We've got a base here that's going to turn. And this base is going to go ahead and step out of the way. Well, you know, they're going to step up there out of the way. And this base will also just, well, they need to move up to here because they want to get as close as they can so they can start opening fire with their handguns. Over here on this back side of the table, we can bring these guys up one inch. We can bring these guys up an inch. We'll bring these guys, we're gonna bring these guys up to here. No, we're gonna bring, uh, yeah, we'll bring them up there. I'm thinking we wanna to try to drop these spikes over here and force them both to come down through that way. That way these guys can now come out and get their spikes in place. And I think that's it for all of our pedestrians. Yeah. Uh, these, you know, I did it again. He did have a shot at this pedestrian with his machine guns. Uh, there's no obstruction, so it's just gonna be a straight 2d6. He misses with both of them. These drivers are very good shooters, but only on Sunday. We have one more base down here. They moved out last time, two, three, so they're, We'll bring them around, hoping to get in a couple of shots on that direction. And I think that's it, except for the shooting on the pedestrian side. we got a couple of Molotov cocktails. They do have a range of medium, so we're going to get a total of two more attacks on this guy. And then we have one handgun that can shoot him as well. So the, yellow, the two yellow dice are going to be the Molotov cocktails, and the handgun is going to be rolled using the white die. So that's one, two hits, it's a critical. So trying to save those hits, he's evading, and he manages to evade one, but he is still on fire. So he is burning up the joint. You know, he actually, oh, you know what I should have done? Too late now, he should have dropped his smoke, which would have uh, helped. We'll do that on our next movement. In the meantime, he goes right back to being on fire, and that could be a problem for later. Uh, do we have any other fighting? So over here, we've got one Molotov cocktail and one gunfire. So once again, the yellow die will be for the Molotov cocktail. It's going to be both misses, and they're getting lucky. Now, moving on to turn number four. He's done moving. He didn't gear up. Uh, but he can move, and... Gotta pick your template before he is in fourth gear. We're gonna put the hard swerve down. That's this template here. And he's gonna hard swerve in this direction. That does mean, oh, he takes one point of damage for the fire. And that hard swerve means he takes a hazard. And that one hazard is going to be a problem because it means he's going to continue taking one point of damage every turn until he eliminates it. But he avoided the curb, he avoided the bad guys, he's all done. He does have a shot at these guys with his machine guns, and he is going to take it. Right, we can check the range. Here's our, our range bands, and you can see he's well within range. So, we'll roll our 2d6, and he gets, he misses two. Uh, but he is, this time he's going to go ahead and for sure drop the smoke. So he's, uh, we'll put the fire next to it. He's going to drop smoke there. And I think that's it for turn number four for our, our drivers. Our pedestrians, though, we're going to move some of these guys. There's only one guy off camera. They're going to get closer on turn four. And they're going to try and position themselves to where they will have shots for as long as possible. Now, these guys are going to operate a little bit different. They move to there, and then these guys will also come out here. Just about one inch, which is just about one base width. And these guys will also come out to there. So that's the end of turn number four, except for the shooting over here, now these guys with the Molotov cocktails are going to move up. I think I forgot to move them, so we'll do that now. Maybe they got some uh, sprinters in the mix there, huh? 
Uh, and I think because of the medium, they are out of range for now. This guy is going to suffer one handgun attack, which will be a miss. And then he's got two handgun attacks. One of them's a hit. His evade die is uh, does not negate it. So our green guy takes his first point of damage. And he has another Molotov cocktail coming his way, which misses. That is the green car's first point of damage. Now it's on to turn number five. We'll bring this guy up. And we'll bring this guy up here. We're going to leave him there to do his attacks. These two fellas, he'll move one inch here, one inch here. Uh, this guy is going to move to there. He's happy with where he is. And he's going to move up one. Now they are going to forego their... They're, they're shooting, and they're going to drop Caltrops. These guys are going to move out to here, and these guys are going to move out to here. And I think that's it for phase number five, except for the shooting. Let's see who all's got a shot. we got a D6 there. Still out of range. We've got two D6 and a Molotov. So up here, two D6 and a Molotov is going to be a total of two, four points of damage that have to be avoided. And uh, let's roll two of those points just for the Molotov cocktail. He avoids one, but he takes two, and he is on fire. Like so. That's it for number five. And then we move on to number six. So this will be the last chance they get to catch up. The guys in the back are going to run ahead to stay close. Uh, we'll just leave them there. Now we're going to bring this guy up one. And then these guys will move up one inch. These guys will move one inch this way. Uh, the firing here, that smoke, is just to slow these guys down. And this guy is going to come one inch. And I think that's probably about it for this turn. Yeah, so that's uh, all done but the shooting for our guys. They are now in range. And because of the smoke show, no, it's going to be a total of two dice, two Molotov cocktails, and one handgun at the black car. What? Oh! You know, they have not activated, so they don't take damage. Um, it'll be at the start of the next turn that they take additional damage. That's going to be two... It's going to be one point of fire damage for the Molotov Cocktails, which he fails to avoid. He is now down to just four hull points. The guy up here, he's not activating, but he does have to face one... Oh, he's out of range of the Molotov Cocktail, so it's just going to be two handgun shots, and they're both going to miss. That's the end of the turn. All the way back down to turn number one. Boy, you thought that uh, your job as a DoorDash delivery man kind of sucked. These, this black car here now, he's down to just three hull points. He's going to have to... Now, he's only in fourth gear, so he does get to move straight and leave these guys behind. Um, and he gets a free shift. So instead of shifting, he's going to eliminate the hazard token that he's got and that's going to get rid of the fire likewise he needs to come up with a very safe oh and then he's going to shoot at these guys with his machine gun and he does have a crew member who's going to shoot at these guys as well so the yellow is being shot at the molotov cocktails he gets four hits on this stand of guys and they're going to try to evade and they're going to evade three of them but not the last so they are eliminated as a threat but he's in trouble. Well, at least he's not on fire. Uh, that's all he can do. Uh, then we come over to the green car, who is also... I don't think he has any... So he activates, and he takes one point of damage. But he does not have any hazard tokens on him. So the fire goes out. Then he opts to perform another veer... And he is still in third gear, and that veer is going to... Hey, stay where you're at, buddy. Is going to put him right here. Oh, wait. I probably should have... Put, 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 yeah, put him back. Okay. That veer is going to put him right here. 
He picks up a hazard token from the curb and opts to shift up to fourth gear. But because that is a... Where is it? That because that's a veer and not a swerve, in fourth gear... Oh, he's in third gear. Oh, that's nothing. Okay, so he picks up two hazards. One for shifting. One that he's happy with that. He's, he's good right where he's at. He doesn't have anybody he can... Oh, no, he can shoot at this guy. You know, I forgot. He's got a crew of two... Which means uh, he should have been taking shots, and he's absolutely going to shoot there. On a four, five, he needs a five to hit. And that is going to be it. He's got, he fired the two machine guns here. No, he fired everything at that guy. All right, so our pedestrians are going to go, and we're going to move up the guy. He's actually right under the camera. You can't see it. I think he's, I think the guy over here is completely out of the fight. This guy is going to have to move over there. We'll move him to here, and we'll move him up to here. Trying to stay out of the way so he doesn't suffer a ram attack. Um, then these guys can move up one and one, and we'll bring him one. This guy is going to drop them caltrops and come hide behind here so he gets a couple of more shots. Then we have one more guy you can't see. He's going to come up to there, and I think that's it for the pedestrians moving. Now we've got a total of two dice shooting at this car and one die throwing a Molotov cocktail. The Molotov hits. He's going to... Oh, he is in third gear now, so he can roll three dice to try to evade. And, oh, you know, it occurs to me that the pedestrian should be rolling one die to evade. Uh, he doesn't get any hits, so the Molotov sets him right back on fire. For one point of damage, and we'll go ahead and drop that fire token down. This may be the problem. Those Molotov cocktails might be a little OP for this. Then we've got a total of, well, they can't shoot through their friends, so we're only going to roll one yellow and one white. The yellow being the Molotov cocktail. The Molotov cocktail hits. He is in fourth gear, remember which means he's going to roll, looking for sixes, he's going to fail, and once again, he takes his one point of damage, and he's on fire. Uh, but he does not, does he have, I don't think, does he have any, uh, he doesn't have any bad stuff on him yet. Okay. Moving on, that was gear phase number one. Moving on to gear phase number two. He's in big trouble because these caltrops are directly ahead of him, and I don't think there's any template that's going to let him avoid it. And that is a particularly troublesome because... Uh, what should we try? What should we try here? Um, first of all, he's on fire. He activates. He loses one point of hull. And the fire goes out because he doesn't have any hazard points. And then, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go ahead and we're just going to rip right along with... It's he's in fourth gear. Yeah, we're going to rip right along with medium. That gives him a shift. So he's going to zip on up. Now that does wipe out his last point of damage. We're going to circle back to him in a second. This guy, when we do our, our crash checks, this guy is also going to just blast on down with the medium. Now, he takes one point of damage because he's on fire. And he does have some hazards. But that's it for him. Then he's going to activate his glue dropper right there. And the glue means the pedestrians cannot chase him. He still has a chance to fix this mess. Uh, oh, you know, and I'm kind of doing this a little out of order, I appreciate. Because he's in third gear, he's going to go ahead and roll. Do we want to risk rolling skid dice? I think we do. we got to try to put out that fire. Um, so with a two, four, and a five... When you don't have the fancy pants gas lance specific dice, you gotta look it up. 
he gets a spin and two shifts. So he can cancel that out, and he's going to eliminate one of those hazards. This is still the second one. Now we got to deal with what happens here. And i got to be honest with you, uh, I do need to look up what happens to this car. According to the rules, when any part of your vehicle hits the caltrops, you immediately lose those, that last hull point, And the caltrops are removed. So we'll go ahead and we'll take those out. Then it says, now the question I have is, do we complete the movement? Or do we, because he lost his last hull point here, I'm inclined to continue the wreck situation here. Um, you do your, you make a short move. So that's this guy right here. So he's going to move up to there. Then you remove all the hazard tokens. Yeah, he didn't have any of those. Then his gear is reduced to one. Then you become a wreck. Roll over under your roof ceases to be a vehicle so we roll it over he's out of the fight wrecks remain in play after vehicles wrecked make an explosion check roll a d6 add the number of ammo tokens he still has two so that's going to be a total of three d6 he is uh oh and then if we get any sixes he explodes no explosions i'm a little disappointed we might have been able to take out a couple of more mondos with us uh, but it wasn't meant to be, so that is now the end of the vehicle turn uh, gear phase two. We're going to th throw some uh, some pedestrians up. They're all going to start converging over here. These guys cannot go over the caltrops. They're going to have to circle around this way. And then again, these guys are stuck in the glue. These guys are going to have to start heading around this way. And now it's a fight between this car and these guys are going to move up one inch there. That's the end of turn two. Now we move on to gear phase three. And we're going to go ahead and move straight ahead, medium. Chapao. Now he takes one point of damage, leaving him with just two. And he really needs, he is in third gear, he really needs to get rid of that fire. So we're going to make our check. And with a 2, 3, and a 6, now he does get a free shift. Oh, you know, instead of rolling the dice, we should have done something else. Yeah, because he only had one hazard, he can use that free shift to get rid of the, the gear. Um... Oh, no, no, no. So well, that was a 2, 3, and a 6, right? 2, 3, and a 6. Because he picks up another hazard when he hits that curb. So as this goes, he now has two hazards to his name. He can use this. He gets a free shift. And I'll just throw this down to show you. So basically, oh, man, do we take a hazard and roll those dice one more time? I don't think it'll do any good. We can just cancel that out, and he is still sitting on two hazards, so he's going to stay on fire. But he does have an opportunity to shoot at this guy, and he's got to do it. Uh, it's so far away, he's going to take two shots. He's going to miss with both of them, and that's the end of his turn three. Um, you know, it really is going to be these guys, well, we need to play it out, right? So on turn three, all of these guys are going to race up to try to converge on him. And that's it. Now, the funny thing is, he's actually done. And this is where the Mondo becomes way OP. Because these pedestrians are going to be able to move over one on gear phase four. And we'll go one, one, one. Um, I'm going to ignore the rest of these guys that are stuck out of position. There's just a handful that even have a chance of making it uh, to catch him. Uh, so that's gear phase four. On and they're out of range still. On gear phase, I mean I can check. That's gear phase four. On gear phase five, they can step aside. These guys are going to move up one inch, and then they are going to—they're not going to get a shot this time. But on gear phase six, they can roll up. So activating these guys on all six gear phases really gives them 
a heck of a lot of ability to influence things. Now, they miss with their gunshot. And that is the end of turn number six. So we can reset everything back down to one. And the car is going to go first. The first thing that happens is he is on fire. So he takes one point. He's only got one point of damage left that he can take. In third gear, he's going to go ahead and make that... Uh, what do we do here in third gear? What do we do? Let's do a veer to get back on this, to get out of the way. We're going to do a swerve, actually. In third gear, that's what's going to happen. This is his only chance to win. Um, he's going to swerve right into those guys. Make a skid check. Now if we wanted to, he's in third gear, and I, I think we want to. We're going to go ahead and make that skid check. And we're going to get a... Eh, that could work. We're going to get a... The good news is, we didn't get that hazard. Yeah, I... Ooh, yeah, that was a mistake. We're in trouble. All right. We're going to go ahead and cancel out the spin. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's a hazard and a spin. So if we cancel out the hazard, then we're left with a spin, and we can rotate on the spot 90 degrees. So he's going to wind up right here, dragging that along. I think it's game over, because on this next one, now, that is going to be a collision. They are classed as lightweight, and they're going to evade. He is not. So let's play through the collision, shall we? He's Oh, he picks up. It's going to be a total of seven dice. Two dice for the side swipe. Uh, I'm sorry, it's a side swipe, so it's going to be three dice for the gear. And then because he is four classes heavier... That's where the other four come from. So they, oh, that's really bad. We got a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hits. Uh, these guys can opt to evade, but, uh, and, and why wouldn't they, right? Um, but they're not going to make it. Uh, so they go squish now. And then it is the pedestrian's turn. And they're going to go one inch one inch and one inch and they're still i think too far away to be able to hit yes they are let's pull that up and then on gear phase number three what is he gonna do he's gonna have to make a hard turn like this the problem is he's still on fire thanks to that molotov cocktail and he loses his last point so he comes over here that is his last hull point and then because he is in, what is it, third gear, he's going to have to make a wreck check on three dice, and we'll see if he gets... Oh, and then he flips. We roll the three dice. We don't get any sixes, so he doesn't even explode in front of the fountain. And that's the end of the game. He almost made it. I think we had too many Molotov cocktails. I think the game might have been a little more fair without those that was just too much damage adding up over the turns but kind of a fun little scenario next time maybe what we'll do is try to have our pedestrians we'll give them more drop weapons and maybe put them up against a war rig or perhaps something a little beefier like a single car with a couple of motorcycle outriders that can be fun i don't know it's all kinds of fun stuff you can do with this game stuff i've never seen before and stuff nobody else on the youtube is doing i sure i'm glad we're doing it together because you guys make this a heck of a lot more fun until next time remember guys i'm praying for you